Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for joining us for another Station Cribs. Today we're in Virginia. We're gonna be doing the Evington Volunteer Fire Department, company number 17. So let's go take a look and see what they have. So we're going to be meeting up with Josh. He's one of the lieutenants here. Hello. Hey. How you doing? Good. I'm Josh hey. Jennings. Yeah, thanks for inviting us out. Yeah, of course. Uh, introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, uh, I'm Josh Jennings. I'm the lieutenant up here at Evington Volunteer Fire Department. If you all want to come on in, take a look around. That's perfect. All right. All right. All right, so in here is our day room. Okay. Um, or our meeting room mainly. Uh, in here we have our... Uh, different like business meetings, some department trainings. Uh, we'll rent this room out to the community every now and again for different events that they want to have. Have different special events down here, banquets, things like that. Yeah, it's a nice big room. You have plenty of area. It looks like you got a kitchen off to the side here. Yep. So um, do you guys do community things like uh, community CPR and stuff like that too? Yeah, so that's something we're actually working on doing this year. Um, I'm actually in the process of trying to get my uh, CPR instructor and then providing those community CPR first aid classes. Here we'll do for our firefighters CPR training, things like that. We have all the mannequins, all the stuff for that here, so we're able to provide that training in-house. Right, right. Um, I like the fact that you come right from the foyer right into the community yep. room. It's really open. It's got that open concept. Oh, yeah. So. Um, you know, it's a nice big room, works perfect for what we need it for, especially for the size of our department. Um, you know, for business meetings, you know, our chief sits up there, we got TV there that we can put whatever we need to, whatever information we need to share on it. Right, right. And then where do we go from here in the house? Yeah, so if you uh, come down here, we'll go down through this hallway. Okay. Right here on the uh, left is our chief's office. Okay. Unfortunately, can't let you in there right now. He's not here at the moment. Understood. He's yeah. got, you know, his office. Because yeah. this is 100% volunteer, right? Yes. 100% so, volunteer. Um, no career staff stationed here. Um, we just have people show up when they have the time to. You know, people have professional jobs outside of here. So um, we like to use this station as much as we can, get people to stay up here. But, you know, unfortunately, people have to work their normal yeah, jobs. Yeah, yeah. Many of us across America, we all work mm -hmm. multiple jobs, yeah. you know, to make a living, but we all want to give back to the community. Oh, yeah. This is a good place to do that. So, you know, just having a volunteer chief, a volunteer lieutenant, mm -hmm. and even the staff uh, is, is the way things are happening across oh, yeah. America. Oh, yeah. And luckily, we have a great group of people here. They like to stay as active as they can, come up here as often as they can and help out. So. Okay, okay. And then back here, you said you want, like people to stay. So yeah. what do you got back here? So we got two bathrooms. Um, our main bathroom right here, it's really no gender assigned, just whatever's available. Okay. Um, and then in here is actually our bunk room. Right. Um, so this is where they can stay. So if you have yep. a bad call or you got some bad weather, they can come up here, yep. spend the night, and uh, be comfortable. Yeah, especially bad weather, um, especially with our area. Roads tend to get plowed last through here. So if we're able to have uh, members stay up here, have beds for them to sleep in, um, just so they can stay at the station, get out if we get a call or something like that, that's something that's really beneficial to us. Okay. And for you viewers, we're actually staying here now. So my gear's here. We're going to spend the night here, so we're going to try to catch a call if, or two if we can. Yeah. Uh, and then tomorrow maybe we'll do a little training, and we're going to be doing a station rigs. So you want to pay attention to that coming up. So looking at the different hardwood and the, and the construction of this, did you guys kind of put this together or did you have it contracted out? Yeah, so we uh, contracted it out. Um, so actually over here on this side of the station just so happens to be where our old station was. Okay. So below us is actually the old concrete bay floor. Um, we've got our hardwood over top of it. Um, you know, there's still all the concrete in the walls and everything like that from where our original bay was. So when the station was from 1981 when you incorporated mm -hmm. it to, to 2014, you actually expanded then. Yes. Okay. So our station is a whole lot bigger than what it was originally because originally it was, I think it was only like five, six hundred square foot, 
and it, it was hard trying to keep the amount of apparatus we had in the station. We'd have to shuffle it around and move it, okay. like that. Okay. Uh, so this is the major kitchen. Yep, uh, our main kitchen, you know, kind of keep it generally set up, kind of like a home almost. You know, we don't have all the commercial appliances. We just got a regular stove, regular fridge, microwave, things like that. But it's just enough to where, you know, you have those volunteers that come down, maybe want to spend a couple hours, watch the Super Bowl that just happened, mm -hmm. you know, hang out on a Monday afternoon or, or Monday evening for drill. You have the amenities to make sure that they're getting served too. Uh, whether you're going to cook dinner for them or, you know, store their sodas in the fridge. Yep. yep. So like, uh, you know, especially during like big training events, um, you know, we'll cook lunch for them, cook breakfast for them. Um, I know last year when we had our UTV training class, you know, we made it a point we were cooking breakfast every morning for everybody coming down, taking a class. Uh, we were cooking lunch for them and everything like that. You know, we've got out there's our deck. We'll grill out there. Let's step out here real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. So out here's our deck. Wow, you know. some nice big deck too. Oh yeah, uh, we we got some deck furniture there. When the weather's nice, we'll hang out out here every now and again. Right, right. Um, got some grills and stuff like that. We can grill out here if we wanted to. Um, you know, not really much to it. It's a deck, but right. But it's a good place again to hang out, to have that camaraderie, mm -hmm. to get to know each other as firefighters and 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 people rather than just coming to do a job. You're getting to know and create that family. Oh yeah. The one thing that I noticed when I was traveling up here is the scenery that we have. You know, looking over the oh, trees yeah. here and stuff like that. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh yeah. Can you kind of tell us where we're at in Virginia? Yeah. So uh, we're actually more towards Central Virginia. Um, we're actually right beside the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains here. Um, just to the uh, west of us, actually, is Bedford County. We got the Blue Ridge Mountains running up through there. To the north of us is the city of Lynchburg with Liberty University. And to the south of us is like Pennsylvania County, with the uh, largest county in Virginia. You know, we've got a very diverse group of people who live around here. Um, you know, we're more of a rural area, but we're not so rural to where we're an hour away from everything. We're probably about 15 minutes away from everywhere else. Oh, um, okay. So with your response area, obviously it's a lot of residential. Mm -hmm. Are they high rises? Are they single family homes? And do you have commercial in your coverage area? Yeah, so we have a couple of commercial structures. We don't have any high rise areas um, in our response area. A lot of our response area is just single family residential. Um, there's a couple of like two, three family dwellings um, here and there in our response area. We've actually got I believe the second largest response area in Campbell County. Okay. Um, our first due response area is about 54 square miles right. and our uh, second due is probably up there close to 100. Okay. Um, we also respond into Bedford County as well. We have a lot of uh, second due response area there. Um, and then just about half of Campbell County is our second due response area. Nice. So if I were to move to this area, because I love the land, it looks like every house has an acre or so, it seems to be, um, and I want to volunteer, how do I go about getting hold of you and, and want to volunteer here? Yeah, so uh, you'll see if you look up Evington Volunteer Fire Department, the uh, Campbell County website, there's actually a portal. Uh, you can submit a membership application there. We have our meetings on the second, third, and fourth Monday night of the month. So you can always come up here, say hi to us, and we'll definitely get you set up. I mean, um, it's not hard. It's a basic background check with us being one of the two uh, non-transport EMS departments in Campbell County. Uh, we do have to go through the state background check, fingerprints and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of a lengthier process with us. Okay. But, you know, we work to try and make it as easy as we possibly can. Right. So... Again, I'm going to kind of go back. I'm just moving in here. Maybe I don't have, I have paramedicine, mm -hmm. you know, I have firefighting, but maybe there's a new resident that moved in mm -hmm. that doesn't have any kind of background. Do they need to have that to come here? No. So we'll take anybody, you know, you can have no experience and just want to get involved. We have a couple of members that actually just joined not too long ago. Uh, we'll provide all the training you need, um, like CPR, first aid. Um, we'll actually provide or the county will provide firefighter one here in Virginia, hazmat operations, firefighter two, um, different classes like that. And then there's a whole lot of EMS classes that you're able to take around here. And what's nice about our department is if you are to pass those classes, we'll actually reimburse you for the full cost of them. That's awesome. So the one thing I noticed when I was driving up that, you know, you have a pretty good parcel of land here. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it looked like you have a pull through all the way in the backside. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so um, back here behind our station, 
we can actually pull all the way around. We try not to take the big like class three vehicles through there just with how skinny it is having the hill beside it. But, okay. You know, we're able to pull like our pickup trucks or, you know, we have a UTV and a trailer. We're able to pull that around the building as well. Okay. How much land do you actually have here? Uh, I think it's about two, three acres, okay. if I'm not mistaken. So the entire hill up that way is all our land up to the next property line up there, all of this area as well. Wow. So you got plenty of place that you can actually do some training out here too. Yeah. So one of the projects we're actually working on, um, there's a training prop called a uh, tailored box. It's a little Connex box. We're actually planning on getting a concrete pad poured just over there. Okay. We're going to put that there, add another Connex box to it, and we're going to have vehicles there for extrication training. Nice. So we're going to be able to do a whole lot more in-house training up here. Um, thing we're actually going to be able to burn in there, so maybe putting on some in-house classes as well in terms of like maybe doing some in-house firefighter one classes, in-house uh, hazmat operations, different trainings and stuff like that. Okay, in here. order to do that kind of stuff, do you guys rely on donations? How do you get the funding for that? So a lot of our funding, uh, it comes from grants and it comes from donations. We've been fortunate enough that we've been here, pretty lucky here with uh, some grants and stuff like that where uh, the uh, Al Strubont's Foundation uh, and the Frey Family Trust Fund, uh, which are two big grants around here, uh, luckily have been very gracious to us and provided us provided us enough funding to uh place the concrete pad there place the tailored props and the connex boxes okay do you also do any kind of fund drives or any uh community events to raise funding yeah so uh we often do some fundraisers um we normally have a brunswick stew probably twice a year we're actually coming up on the time we do it this year um there's different fundraising we'll do um in terms of like uh the Landon Strong Foundation, he's actually one of our honorary firefighters. Uh, he was a, a little kid who unfortunately passed away from brain cancer. Okay. So we'll do uh, some funding and stuff like that up here for him as well. Uh, the Landon Strong Foundation helps to support uh, the cancer research in terms of brain cancer. Uh, we'll also help put one of his classmates at our elementary school that is in our area, uh, put them through college. That's awesome. So, yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah. That's one of the things that I really enjoy as I travel across America is learning what, you know, different communities do, whether they're a large department like South Metro we went mm -hmm. to or smaller departments like this, you guys are really making a huge impact on the communities themselves. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's what we're here for. Um, ultimately, our main purpose is we want to help the community the best way we can, whether it be, you know, emergency responses or just community events, having somewhere for people to come to, hang out, meet new people, meet us, and everything like that. Awesome. All right, let's check out the rest of the house. All right. Let me close the door, make sure we keep the heat in for us. Oh, yeah. So if you come here to our left, um, again, we're back in our main. Yeah, uh, great big U. Yeah, yeah, okay. Pretty much. You just walk here. Uh, back through here is our day room, actually. Okay, I'll follow you. Yeah. So oh, this here, is set up nice. Oh yeah, we got some uh, some actually nice new recliners that were actually just donated to us uh, last year by Schulz Furniture. Okay. Um, you know, we got a picture of our rescue over there on the wall. Got it a little bit decorated in here. Nice big TV just for you know places for our members to hang out right right this definitely feels very homey it doesn't oh, yeah. feel it doesn't have that industrial feel mm -hmm. of a lot of the newer firehouses this feels like grandma's house or my house or anybody else's yeah, house like you know the whole reasoning for this was for it to feel kind of like a living room at your house you yeah know? you're able to come down you're able to relax you know I mean, even the curtains you know are what i have in my house yeah just you know somewhere to hang out with your friends and everything like that talk you know we can hook game consoles up to the TV, play games, watch movies, TV, stuff like that. Perfect, this is awesome. Yeah. All right, what else we have? So if we come through here, this is the last main part of our station. This is kind of our really storage area. Okay, um, you gotta have storage, yeah. Yeah, in here we got different like tools and stuff for different equipment, um, okay. our extra tables and chairs right there behind you. For the banquets or whatever yep. you're setting up, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then in here is actually our PPE storage. Okay. So for so all your N95s and masks and all that kind of yep. stuff, maybe your gowns for the COVID, that's all in there, right? Yep. Okay. Everything in there, and then like all firefighter turnout gear for if we need to issue it to any new members and stuff like that. Okay. 
Um, so that's pretty much the house part of it, but you yep. have a pretty large apparatus bay. Oh yeah, so that's one thing I like about here is our bay is one of the bigger bays in Campbell County. Plenty of room to move around. We're not like feeling tight to the wall or anything, trying to get into the trucks or trying to store gear. So. Okay, can you walk me around out yeah. there? All right, if you want to come through here. All right, so this is a quick, easy access to the apparatus bay. Yeah, it's one of our two uh, main entry points from our main station. Okay. So you walk around here, we got different stuff. This is actually some extra like gowns, PPE and stuff like that over here. Yeah. Some of our old PPV fans um, for ventilation, stuff like that. Okay. But if you want to come over through here. Looks like you got a tanker. Yep, this is our tanker tender. Okay. Um, Holds 2,500 gallons of water and uh, it's got a 1250 GPM pump. We really need that in our area just with the amount of our area that is unhydrated around here. Um, you know, it's really hard to find a fire hydrant around here, to be completely honest with you. Things are getting better now that more houses are being built. We're actually the fastest growing community in Campbell County. Okay. But uh, for the time being now, that is something that is very essential to so our So do operation. you guys usually call a tanker task force or do you guys carry enough water to, to fight most of your fires? Uh, depending on where we're at and depending on the size of the fire, um, a lot of times we'll be okay with the first and second due department. Um, majority of the second due departments around here have a tanker, so a lot of times we'll be fine with just that. If needed, we'll call an additional tanker if needed, or if the fire is really big, then we will call a task force which is just going to be every department that has a tanker in the county coming. Okay. Now, as I traveled across America, they call them tenders versus yep. tankers. What do you guys call it down here in Virginia? Tankers. A tanker. All yep. right. What do you got here? So this is our utility. Uh, it's also our main EMS vehicle. Okay. Um, it's a 2021 Silverado SSV. It's actually the police package. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Um, we've got a whole command slide out in it and everything. Okay. Um, it's our main EMS vehicle uh, we use for EMS response in terms of our first responder status. Okay. So for EMS, are you guys EMTs or your paramedics, just first responders? Uh, so here we're actually just trained to an EMT level or a BLS level okay. um, around here. So who is your supporting EMS service that would actually do the transports? So that would be either the Campbell County Rescue Squad uh, or the, which is a volunteer EMS agency, the only volunteer, or one of the only two volunteer transport agencies still in Campbell County or the Campbell County Department of Public Safety, which is career staff. Okay. And got a nice UTV here. Yep, we actually just got this last year. It's okay. uh, an Intimidator G1. Okay. Um, so we use this for search and rescue operations or hard to fight brush fires, especially with uh, a lot of our terrain being hilly. Um, actually, just to the, uh, I guess that'd be south of us, would be uh, Johnson Mountain. So fighting brush fires through there, that really comes in handy. Okay. Do you guys have a lot of recreational stuff to do out in the, the woods? Because traveling up, you know, it looked like it was very rural, for like horse country. Yeah, so uh, we've, around here, we got a couple of farms. Um, so especially like farm rescue around here is something that's pretty big. Um, we also have a couple of parks, um, mainly to, towards our uh, east side of our jurisdiction. We've got a big county park there. Okay. Um, other than that, there's really not much else. Gotcha. And you got a trailer? Does this haul the UTV also? That's no. on a, okay, what's in this? So this is our hazmat trailer. Okay. We are the other, the second hazmat department in Campbell County. Wow, okay. Um, we cover the entire west side of the county and then the Concord Fire Department covers the entire east side. Okay. So that, in terms of like specialized hazmat response, that's what we take. We take that with our uh, brush truck right there. And um, we've got stuff to a technician level on there. So decon equipment, different stuff to like control leaks and things okay. like that. Okay. All right. And then you were just talking about your yep. brush truck. So this is our brush truck. We call it our attack. Um, it's a 2019 F550. It carries 400 gallons of water. Wow. Okay. Um, it's got different tools. It's got a four shoe line on top, booster reel, stuff like that, which right. is just all lighter hose for uh, um, just fighting brush fires. You know, you don't want to drag big inch and a half hose through the woods. It's something smaller, gives you enough water. To be yeah, like that forestry line. line or whatever. Yep. And then is it four wheel drive? It is. Yeah. 
And then this here is our rescue. It's a 29, uh, I'm sorry, 2016 uh, Pierce Saber. Okay. Um, we got it through, uh, it's county improvement money. Um, so we got funding through them. I uh, got it built 2016, received it probably 2017. Okay. And it served us really well. So this is the one that you mentioned to me in our email that you might want to do a station cribs or a station yep. rigs on, right? Yep. Yeah, so you viewers, make sure you pay attention. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification button, because we're going to be doing a walk around of this entire truck in another episode. And then this right here is actually our newest rig to us. It is a 2008 Rosenbauer, uh, I believe it's a Sabre pumper. Okay. Um, or not Sabre, Spartan, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, we don't see too many Rosenbauers uh, as we've been traveling so no. far. So we actually just put this in service last year. We got it again with the Al Schrubons grant. They've been very, very gracious to us. They actually paid for us to have our entire station paved. Um, they paid in full for this truck. We got it used, and so far this truck has been great to us. We've got it set up, you know, pretty much the way we want it. Um, pretty much as a just pure straight fire engine nice, is what we want. Nice. Now, as we were walking around, I noticed you have an uh, air fill station. Yep. You got a couple other props that were in the back mm -hmm. there. You got an ice machine. So you got a lot of things out here. Uh, all your gear is up on the side of the, the walls, or do you yeah. have a gear room? Yeah, so this is all of our gear over here on the side of the walls. Okay. Um, so members who live a little closer to the station, um, they'll keep their gear down here. Okay. Um, like me, my gear's here. Um, but this is where majority of the time we'll have our members keep their gear just so when they get up here, you know, it's easy to grab real quick and hop on the truck. Okay. So where I'm from, we have a lot of volunteers also. Mm -hmm. And a lot, of, a lot of ours, they make the volunteers come to the station first to go to the, make the response. Do you guys blue light it or green light it or whatever lights you use to get to here? Or are you guys going to the scene from home too? Uh, it really depends on where the call is at. So here in Virginia, we're able to have red and white lights in our trucks. Um, so for me, just where I live, I live closer to the station. So I'm majority of the time coming up here anyways. Um, some members will live a little bit further away, so they'll keep their gear with them and they'll just respond to the scene. We're trying to get away with that, especially with the fact that, you know, it can cause damage to their personal vehicles, especially with, you know, people not paying attention where they're driving, stuff like that. But uh, we'll definitely every now and again have members respond to the scene in their personal vehicle. Okay, okay. Do you guys have a minimum what you take out the truck? Is it driver or is it two or three members? So we like to try and have at least in our engine and our rescue a minimum of three. Um, sometimes it's not possible, but if we have members needing us on scene, we'll just go with the driver. Okay. About how many members do you have in your department? Yeah, so we have currently 24. We can have a max of 30. Okay. So we're still working on getting some more members. We're actually working on what's called an associate program uh, where they have a less call percentage they need to run, but they'll stay up here more okay. on the trucks more and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And about how many calls do you get a year? So last year we uh, actually ran our highest number of 200 and I believe it was 283. Okay, that's a pretty good number. Yeah, so you know, we're median in terms of call volume right in the middle some departments a little bit to the north or south of here get around 500 to where we get around 200 okay. or so but every year so far that number has been increasing more and more okay now i noticed on your website when i went to the county and was doing some mm -hmm. research on you you have a little bit of a substation too right yes we do we have a uh, station two um it's down there off of us highway 29 um which is really just the main lifeline for Campbell County, cuts right through the middle of it. Um, there we just keep an engine. We have a little bit of extrication supplies on there as well. Um, and that engine we're actually looking at replacing this year. Okay, so. okay. It's nice to kind of separate your territory. You said it was a large territory. Mm -hmm. So even just separating it you know, by 10, 15 minutes will make a world of difference. Oh yeah. Okay. And behind you, you got a nice radio room it looks yep. like. So in here is our radio room, um, you know, in here we use it the computers for like our reports we're doing everything online now okay. we're getting away from paper so we have our reports there we've got like our little faxes we get um in terms of like our run times and stuff we get all of that on the computer now a nice base station radio um a station alerting system we're working on currently uh is being hooked up here okay so, so how do you guys get dispatched 
Obviously, it's up and running. Yeah. Up good. So um, they'll set off tones. Okay. Um, they'll set off a pair of tones, and that will alert our pagers. All of our members have them. Okay. Um, that kind of lets us know what the call is, you know, where it's at, things like that. And we also get an alert on our phone. Okay. Um, for so it. So like an I am responding kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. We use something called Rover Mobile. Okay. We actually, if you look over here above our door, we've got a TV here, um, and it's got all of our calls. It will show you the map. Okay. And it will also show uh, messages and stuff like that for different things that uh, like may be important to the department. Right, right. Yeah, that it, it, initial cat information, whether it's a hoarder house mm -hmm. or a long driveway or, you know, they'll maybe even tell you sometimes where the hydrants are. Yeah. So, like, if you look on there, you can see the little red dots, and that shows us exactly where the hydrants are in terms of where we're going. Um, on our phones, it will tell us where the closest one is, give us map and directions to it. Okay. And we also have a CAD system in every single one of our trucks. Nice. It's good to have that technology. Oh, yeah. And this is the foyer. This is where we came back in, yep. right? And what do you have up here? Just some of the yeah. old memorabilia? Yeah, just old memorabilia here. Um, like an old uh, Federal Q siren, old radio axe. Right. Uh, Scott Air Bottle, things like that. Who's the kid? Is that the yep. brain cancer kid? Yep. So that is uh, Landon Martin. Okay. He is an honorary firefighter here. Um, gave him the unit number 1755, and that has been retired. Nice. Yeah. He was a big part of this department. Um, I know I will. I know my chief will do anything for him, anything for his family. So. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. Well, Josh, thank you so much for taking us around. We really appreciate the information you gave us. Um, this is Evington. Did I make sure I say that yes, right? Yes, yeah. Evington Volunteer Fire <laughs> Department. It's company number 17. Thank you all for watching. Uh, but before we end, always do us a favor, hit that subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Smash those like buttons, make a comment below. Uh, but don't forget, we now have a members page that you guys are all welcome to. So hit that join button and you'll see some behind the scenes. We're going to be spending over 24 hours here. So hopefully we get some calls and that's where you're going to see that information. So thank you all for watching and we'll see you again next week.